Hello everybody and welcome to Tech in 5 Minutes. Today we are talking about software requirements specification. Watch this video till the end to be aware of the top tool we use in SRS. On our channel, we share thoughts on recent developments in the tech industry. Subscribe not to miss new videos. Let's start. So, SRS is a detailed description of the system's purpose, functionality, interface, and performance criteria. Watch further to know more about the structure of this document. But first, let's review the reasons for using it. What are the reasons for using an SRS document? SRS describes how a software system should be developed. It provides everyone involved with a roadmap for that project. SRS and software engineering creates the basis for all documentation. It sets your communication on the right track helps you understand the product. SRS documentation helps to grow your development standards, and it helps to cover risks on each development stage. Because things could change in the working environment, your SRS document should be flexible enough to allow for updates. Now let's talk about the structure of an SRS document. We'll take a look at how each fragment of the file comes in handy during the actual project for us, and what parts we consider the most important ones. So, how to prepare an SRS document? The first point is introduction. It consists of five sections, such as purpose, document conventions, intended audience and use, scope, and the last one is references. The second point is the overall description, which includes product perspective and features, user classes and characteristics, operating environment, design and implementation constraints, user documentation, and finally, assumptions and dependencies. The third point is system features and requirements. Here we write more in-depth description than in the previous two points. So, its sections are Functional requirements describe functionality from the user's perspective. It involves a detailed description of how the feature works, how it reacts to errors, which data it needs to verify, etc. You can see an example now. External interface requirements describe page elements that will be visible to the end client. Depending on the project, they can consist of four types, such as 1. User interface 2. Software interface 3. Hardware interface and 4. Communication interface This part is mostly handled by designers rather than developers. System requirements describe the conditions necessary for the product to run. Usually, they refer to hardware limitations and characteristics. And finally, non-functional requirements which set the criteria according to how the system has to function. For many teams, this section of an SRS is the most challenging one. Does it sound difficult for you? Drop a comment under the video. Here, we recommend checking out our full guide to non-functional requirements. The link is in the description. And now let's talk about tools for SRS documentation. We are excited to share our favorites used in SRS creation and further product management. Watch until the end to know about our most used one. So, number one is the context diagram. It collects all the components in the system into a bigger picture. We think that the significant advantage of a context diagram is providing clear visual representation. Number two is functional decomposition. This tool presents a hierarchical view of the system, so you see which features are more important than others and understand the dependencies in the project. Number three is use case diagram. This tool displays relations between users and features. So, in this diagram, each user is seen as an actor who interacts with various features. Number four is a sequence diagram. It shows how functionality and system develop over time. In the sequence diagram, you will identify how an actor moves through the system and what changes happen. Number five is as-is and to-be process model. As-is diagram describes current processes. What is important is that it helps the entire team to understand how things are done in the current solution, identify problematic areas and risks. On the other hand, the 2B process model shows how existing processes can be revolutionized within your software. Number six is user stories, which describe actions that a user can perform with the application. You can start with writing epic user stories that refer to general activities under normal conditions. Number seven, and our most used tool, is Mind Map. One of our favorite advantages of mind mapping is that it keeps the brainstorming process creative. 
What is exciting, sketching, and filling out a map is spontaneous, and it feels a lot less like a typical documentation activity. All in all, a system requirement document is the cornerstone of your product's long-term success. This video was prepared by the Jelvix team. We provide software development, UI UX design, and testing services to top brands worldwide. Find our contact details in the description box. Thank you for watching this video. We share the experience of data analytics. So make sure to subscribe not to miss a single video. And don't forget to like this video and press the bell button. Bye for now.